Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Today I'm presenting our very first mental pandemic mental health check-in for women. So excited to have this awesome roundup of women who are going to share our stories about how the pandemic has impacted us in our society, in our lives. Just We just want to just be free to share. So this is the platform to do it. If you haven't already and you're watching this later, subscribe to thefeistynews.com where you'll be invited to our monthly meetings where we'll meet just like this privately. We'll talk about the things that are happening in our lives and we'll have women on hand who can offer their expertise. So I'm so excited to begin today. Um, before I welcome all the women to the show today, I want us to do a quick little exercise just to make sure that everybody here is on the same accord. It's a song you all know and sing along with me. I'll sing it one time and then this next time you can do it. Oh my goodness. Here we go. <clears throat> if you're feisty and you know it, clap your hands. Okay. If you're feisty and you know it, <laughs> clap your hands. If you're feisty and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're feisty and you know it, clap your hands. All right, we got it. We got it. Now we got that energy rolling. We, go. we got that energy go. rolling. <laughs> so I'm excited to be here, and I'm going to introduce one. And you guys can say hi one by one before we begin with the for, for the um the program tonight. Thank you, everybody who's watching, who signed in. I hope you want to ask questions. There's a poll at the bottom. We want to know if you're okay. If you could take that poll, that would be great. Um, and um, first, we want to introduce Helene Beck. Helene is a mental health and wellness advocate and the host of Coming from the Heart podcast. Hey, Helene, how are you? I'm perfect. How are you tonight? I am amazing. I'm amazing on this mental health check-in night. We're checking in with all the women. Next, we have Dana Torpy. Dr. Dana Torpy Newman is a licensed clinical psychologist in San Diego and in Denver. She specializes in couples therapy, mood disorders, and the ways in which societal factors contribute to psychological distress. Go ahead then. Hey, how you doing? I am great. I can't wait to talk about all of those things. They're my favorite topics. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so true. I think societal factors are the root cause of psychological distress. So you got it. I think that too. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So here we are. Next, we have Holly Wade. Um, she is a licensed clinical social worker and certified Daring Way facilitator. She works with professionals experiencing anxiety and depression in Memphis. Hello, Holly. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Oh, excited. Wow. wow, Holly, you've worked with professionals with anxiety. These are people who are people who are depend people depend on you're making sure that they're able to take care of everyone else. That is awesome. Yeah. All right. Next, we have Dr. Jacqueline Darby. She's a licensed psychologist and certified group psychotherapist in Washington, D.C. She's the owner of the Unconscious Shift a wellness consulting agency that focuses providing trainings on mental health wellness to community organizations. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Hey. Hi, everybody. Oh, to be wow. here. <laughs> that is awesome, Dr. Jacqueline. All right. Well, you know, now we're going to get started with our program tonight. We're talking about pandem pandemic mental health is a check-in. So we're checking in with all of these awesome women leaders and professionals to see how we're going. And maybe you can see some of yourself in us. Um, I also want to add a little caveat to before we when, we when we first begin the first person who talks i want you to do the feisty role just just to just to get it in your system and the feisty role is something that i do in all of my episodes of my um show the feisty news and i say the feisty news so i want to see everybody <laughs> do it the feisty is just like that just be like bitch please the feisty like that so i want you to say thank you for having me on the feisty and i want to see that so all right, Woo let's begin. I am T. Erica. I am the host and producer of the Feisty News. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what happened during my experience in the pandemic. During the just before the pandemic, I was traveling the country. Um, I had went to 18 different cities in a little under a year. I was just traveling, just 
going and seeing how far I could go after I had lost everything. I just turned it into a, 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 a adventure. And I happened to stop by um, New Orleans and I was just captivated by the city and I was determined to stay. And I managed to, to come here to find a place for myself. And as soon as I got settled into an apartment, literally the pandemic hit. I was isolated in the city. I was alone and have any friends or family, anybody I could trust or lean on. And it was very hurtful, you know, during that time when I wanted to get out and explore and I couldn't. What did I end up doing? Oh my gosh, I just did so many creative projects. I, I wrote a book. I wrote made a al music album. I created products, you know, to, to help soothe people during the pandemic. I was just going full force creating, creating to kind of help my mind, but that didn't really help that much. I was also experiencing more mental episodes than usual. And I do have mental health issues myself that I battle with consistently, like anxiety. And um, I don't even know the name of the names of the other things, but it's, it's situations where I just go really loopy and I have to center myself or just sit in a room and not talk to anybody because it just feels like my mind is out of control. So through all of those things that I have, I still manage to achieve so much every one of my goals 100 percent completion rate and um I, I just find it fascinating that i'm able to do that even though i feel so out of control at times you know you know mentally but i guess that's just the woman in me and just stepping up you know and doing what we need to do um, um as far as what what do i have experienced since then i i think i just made the best of what i had been of of life, just like everybody else does. And at this point, I've come to a place where I'm actually content with who I am and I'm handling the stresses of life so differently. I'm, I'm talking about within the last month and it may have something to do with the feisty news and feeling like I'm really walking in my purpose and doing the things I've always dreamt of doing. But since doing starting this show and organizing women and offering this type of support for women, but I've always been organizing support. But this type of support, it's making me feel like everything's gonna be all right. Just keep going, just keep moving. And I wanted to share my truth, something that my mom has shared with me, no matter what happens, no matter what your mind is thinking, because your mind isn't always right. Every thought you have isn't the, a true thought. So that's one thing I had to tell myself, what if you're wrong? <laughs> Even though I'm so smart, you know what I'm saying? I can do anything. Sometimes those thoughts that come into my mind, they might be wrong. And that was really life-changing for me. I was like, I might be wrong. How, how can I be wrong? But accepting that really changed my life. Like you might not be all those negative things or the conspiracy theories that come up in your mind. The anxiety might not be correct. And, you know, sit with that for a second and, and, and realize that you're flawed and you're fallible and that's okay. And that's, that's the truth that really set me free. So um, we're still going through the pandemic at this moment. I'm okay. And I'm, I'm happy to say that, you know, um, it's some things that could improve, you know what I'm saying? But for the most part, I'm content and I'm proud of myself and I'm excited about meeting so many awesome women. And this is like literally to me, the best time of my life. So I just wanted to create this uh, opportunity, the pandemic mental health check-in to allow other women to share where they are, the good and the bad. It doesn't matter, you know, where you are, but just know that someone is listening to you. Someone wants to know how you're doing. Somebody wants to hear your true thoughts and your true concerns. And, and that's me and all of these women here on the panel. So thank you very much for your time. I am T. Erica, the host and producer of the Feisty News. So yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> don't worry. Okay. Don't mind us. We got okay. you. Okay, cool, cool. First of all, um, I know I'm so used to Zooms and Instagram Lives. This is my world of podcasting and pretty much my life every single day. Um, before I begin to tell a little bit about my journey, and a little bit about a little bit about what I'm about and why I'm here and sharing the stage with you guys. I just want to say that I'm honored and thank you so much for having me. It's just a pleasure to be actually doing my first. Well, I wouldn't say my first podcast, but my I, I mean not my first podcast, but a first gathering that I actually haven't put together. I put together webinars. I put together many many stuff. My world before I was podcasting, I was an international grad professor at Stevens Institute of Technology, so I was always 
in the process of always putting and connecting people until um, the way my story goes is having the podcast coming from the heart started two years ago, almost two years ago in June. Um, I was going through a really difficult time in my life. I had um, really bad vertigo and I was sick for a period of time before I left my job right before the pandemic started. I left my job in January from Stevens and of course we all know in March is when the pandemic truly hit. So Coming From The Heart podcast really started because my daughter and I conceived of the idea of putting my voice out there. I was always in a position of speaking to my international students. I was a second language linguist and just had this really incredible community of people around me. And then when I was pretty ill and not able to do my job and commute to work because I was going through horrible vertigo and trying to find the answers of stability, mental stability and also physical stability I, until I really found a therapist that I was working with, my life was pretty much a black hole of an abyss. And um, coming from the Hard Podcast and the concept really was born out of my dealing with my, my own personal journey. And what I wasn't aware of at the time when I was going through the physical of not being able to feel stable and dizzy and all the things that I was going to, through in doctors, I never acknowledged the fact that I was going through a really bad mental health issue as well. It was sort of running parallel between the two and I, it was something that I really didn't acknowledge or it wasn't really acknowledged to me when I was going to all these different doctors. So I really found my spark again um, by moving back down to my hometown in South Jersey where I was from as a child and fortunately I was able to spend some time in my mom's home where I literally walk the beaches of my hometown looking into the ocean and trying to find physical and mental stability and coming from the heart podcast or really the word coming from the heart is something that might like i said my daughter and i were having this really pretty uh shall we say deep or dark conversation and i said you know everything that i'm feeling truly does come from my heart because i know what i'm going through there must be so many other people that are going through such similarities. And I felt I have to get my voice out there. And my daughter is an amazing person. And she, you know, I get emotional when I'm talking about it. She's like, you just got to get your voice out there. Just sit down. And I didn't know anything about podcasting world. I knew about speaking to the world because that was my job of what I did. I interviewed thousands of scholars in my position for English and all the other stuff, but I never really had a true platform. So I found my spark again by walking the beach of my hometown. And I'm very spiritual and looking out to the universe and saying, you know, what is my purpose? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? And speaking my truth really was this mantra that I came up with. What I pretty much do every day in, my, in a meditation is I say to myself that I am strong, I am confident, I'm good, I'm free and I'm me. And every single day of my life, really for the almost the past two years, I incorporate that into a meditation of my own by just looking out whether I'm just taking a walk or if I'm near water. Anyone who knows my, my feed on Instagram, it's always water related. I'm, if I can find water and be near water, that's where I'm going to be. So I've cultivated a really beautiful community of all different people pretty much around the world. We have a platform on Spotify, we have a platform on Apple, and I'm doing Instagram Lives weekly with artists and producers and, as I say, the famous and the infamous who really just want to connect and share something really unique and special in their life. And I reference that as to their, to their beautiful story. So it's not so much I get impressed by people's fame, it's more about people who really just want to contribute. I'm working with people out in California, a nonprofit organization called GEM, someone who's actually trying to do something about the homeless population and people in so many different communities that are just um, didn't do very well during the pandemic. So for me, the pandemic was a silver lining. It was a way, I think you were mentioning that you wrote a book and you were doing things for, you know, introspectively for yourself. Coming from the heart was something that was born out of my need to be able to connect back to a community and create a community. And I feel blessed that I was able to do it, you know, through this horrific time of what, of course, we reference as the pandemic. So I thank you for letting me share my story and I thank you for letting me part of, be part of your platform. Thank you. I'm glad to have you, Helene. I, well, we, I, I know we agreed earlier that everyone was gonna share, you know, about a specific topic related to um, having mental health um, 
acceptance during the pandemic. And you wanted to talk about creating, creating peace of mind. So do you have any tips or advice for anyone who's watching on how they can create peace of mind right now during this tumultuous circumstance? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. I can totally touch upon that. Well, my peace of mind, quite frankly, was going to or finding a niche or something in my life that I connected to. My, my, my peace of mind was going to the beach or to find a water, or a, whether it's a lake, an ocean, something, because that's what gives me solace, solace in my life. But if someone else connects to nature in a different way and wants to take a walk in the woods or connect to something else that gives them joy or painting or, or singing, I actually have a singing background. I actually sang a lot during the pandemic because I did that my whole life. So I think that you know, peace and tranquility is something that we really need to be looking at, as I say, introspectively, because everyone's peace of mind is so completely different. It's just how you spin it or how you think about it. But I really think it's going back to the core of what makes you happy. And what made me happy is, t is speaking to people and connecting. I'm always connecting people. I have artists connecting to other artists. I've, I find people on Instagram that I connect to people in my personal life. I believe my, my purpose or my why I'm here is to be a connector and also just to, get, it's, it's, it's to just give peace and, and tranquility to others that I connect to. So for you creating peace of mind, the, the, the truth that you wanna share is, can you do it succinctly? I'm sorry? Can you say it succinctly? How to create peace of mind? How to create peace of mind is just to think about something that truly is, is, is unique to you. And that's my point. Like, you know, my, my purpose or what I connect to, or say my, my passion or what I, what I enjoy is, is, is being near water or connecting to a beach. Okay. Peace okay. for someone else might be something completely different. It might be writing for someone. I also enjoy writing. I also enjoy singing. So I think that it's sort of a situation where I can't tell you what your piece should be. I think it's something that someone, people really know what their piece is. I think we're born with that. And I think what happens is that we evolve and we morph into jobs and situations. And I think that the pandemic, what the pandemic has taught us, and I've spoken to hundreds of people on topics and, and all kinds of stories, is that if you're fortunate enough to find something in your life that makes you want to get up every morning and go do it, you found your peace, you found your passion. And I mean, and I suffer some angst and anxiety too, truly every day about things that I went through with, with having vertigo. And I try to work through it with my mantra, which I just mentioned, and also with the peace that I've brought myself. So I just think that if you dig deep within yourself and then also maybe find a community of people that also share that, or maybe not, maybe that's not your thing. Maybe you like to do, do things on your own, but I also think it's nice to have that connection with others. All right. Thank you, Helene. Thank you so much. If you guys want to continue to connect with her and see all these awesome people that she's talking with, the um, Coming from the Heart podcast is on all the platforms, and I'm sure she's willing to um, share with you if you connect with her on social media. Thank you so much for sharing, Helene. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you guys for um, your patience while I'm continuing to learn this Zoom thing. But um, yeah. next, we're bringing up Dana. Dana is going to be, how do I do that? Oh, how do you, um, you me? There you go. Okay. Dana is going to talk to us a little bit about her story. And Dana, tell us a little bit about your experience during the pandemic. How, where were you beforehand and what happened? How did it impact you? Um, so I have actually a very complicated pandemic story, both professionally and personally. Um, so I have a private practice in both a telehealth practice in Southern California, and I had an in-person practice outside of Denver. Um, and so that, um, I was also at the time that COVID happened, um, the chair of the democratic party for the County that I lived in, um, in the reddest County in Colorado. So, and I have, uh, two little kids an eight year old and a six year old. So they were six and four, I think. Um, and so it was, so, so I'm going to tell you all of these things, but please know that I've not parented my children in two years. Um, that is the theme that we should all remember. Like 
I now know who some of these YouTube people are that play Minecraft. They seem like nice young men who are modeling for my children appropriate ways to be in video games. I don't know um, because I have not been able to do all of these things and parent my children simultaneously. Um, so it was actually crazy with COVID. My practice for the last two years, I've, I've had more sessions in the last two years than like by like, like multiple, uh, I don't, I don't even know how to describe how many more, but it was like 400 more sessions in 2020 than in, uh, whatever the year before that was 2019 and like wow. like 600 more sessions that in 2021 than in 2019 like just a, an insane number of people who are who were struggling it was interesting because i actually was not struggling because i was the chair of this political party and because my work i had already had a telehealth practice for many years because I had these two little kids, I'm terrible on maternity leave. I was so bored. And so I started a telehealth practice when my younger son was born um, and he was already four. So I, I had a telehealth business going. So I was, I'm never on top of technology. That is not my usual thing. And I was like, oh, I am prepared for this. I know what to do because I'm terrible on maternity leave. So I moved my Denver practice to virtual. So I, I was working the whole time. My business was not interrupted. In fact, it was increased exponentially. Um, and I was trying to run this political party during uh, 2020, which was a crazy year. Um, so that was, I don't remember what happened over the last two years, except that I worked a ton, did not parent my children and ran a political party until we decided to move across the country eight months ago, uh, because I recognized that the our school district uh, was about to take a very, a bad turn. And my friends who had already seen education reform happen in our community years before that had already educated me on not using my kids as sacrificial lambs. So then we moved across the country <laughs> several months ago and here I am. So I think that that is the easiest way to capture what happened. I did quite well psychologically, which is unusual for me. Um, one, because I didn't have babies anymore and, and I started taking Zoloft when Trump was elected. So I was prepared already for how to come out of this. <laughs> um, and I also have a great group of friends. Like having friends and connection is everything. Many of my friends are actually on this call. Like they're so kind and are supporting me. <laughs> um, and the other part about friendships is that they are substantive friendships. We talk about real things that are meaningful, that are about values. That is how you protect your mental health. That's why I love relationships. I treat them all day. I talk about them endlessly. Um, I engage in them fully. Like that is, that is my biggest interest other than, you know, fighting for equity and dismantling systemic biases and things. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, we have two comments that I want to acknowledge. Um, Kelly, <laughs> Kelly says Dana is amazing. And um, Christian says, um, so I appreciate this truth, Dana. Parenting through the pandemic has been unreal. Thank you. They know I did not parent my children as well. I'm very <laughs> open about it. <laughs> okay. Well, just, um, well, you wanted to talk about the breakdown of relationships during the pandemic. What's the most insightful um, note that you want to leave with us today? about the breakdown of relationships? So I would say that the biggest thing that happened over the pandemic was that people lost their ability to engage in emotional avoidance. So really they were having like a lot of interactions with people that were superficial, you know, like, hey, let's go have a drink. Let's go do these things that don't really include deep, meaningful conversation. And so once everyone's relationship went to virtual, like, hey, we can FaceTime they were having wine together and had nothing to talk about because there was nothing going on in their lives. Like I had many clients say, well, we've tried to have like virtual game night with our friends, but the reality is like, we don't do anything during the day. And I'm like, but it, it's 2020 there, there, there are elections to fight for. We, we can like, there are things to do. Um, and, and so I think that people realize just how superficially they were connected to their support system by virtue of no longer having superficial activities to make it seem like they were, they were close. Wow. Well, can I ask you a question? How 
Mm-hmm. How did you notice that people were actually connecting with others? Were there a specific um, avenue where the connections were actually reinforced and made stronger because of the pandemic, since this was a breakdown that you were noticing? Um, I mean, I noticed it in my own like world of people who were still working toward substantive systemic change. You know, all of those people, other than the whole, how do you homeschool your child while you have a job, cannot leave the house, and your child is now always there 24-7. Other than that, I would say that people who were working toward things that were not just passing the time, you know, like, oh, let's do this because it's Friday and like we need to have fun. Those people I think held up much, much better than the people who were just kind of, I don't, the only other ways I can describe it are like passing the time, engaging in a lot of activities that serve the function primarily of emotional avoidance. This was particularly true for romantic partners who had, I've had this conversation a billion times in couples therapy where the partners are like, crap, all of the things that we used to do which were again, like just activities that they would do together, they covered up or masked the fact that they didn't actually share pretty significant values. And so when you're stuck at home about an issue that became more and more politicized, it really revealed very deep differences between partners, some of which were, I mean, I don't know what you do with that. I don't, I don't know what you, I mean, I do, I, I have to do it in couples therapy all the time. But like, it is really overwhelming when you're like, crap, you are not someone that I'm really compatible with. Mm. Yeah, please, honey. Yes. So it was a big revelation for relationships all over the place. It was, it was a taking the mask off moment for the entire, you know, society, you know, our entire society. Let's see who you really are now that I have to look at you without all these breaks for eight to 10 hours, you know, outside doing our careers. Wow. Well, um, when the couples that you pair, in the couples that you um, work with, did you see any resolutions or was it just all downhill? <laughs> I mean, it varies. Some people had just never had those conversations. And so some couples that I see are like, ah, we've never talked about things at a deep level. That's actually my favorite work because I'm like, okay, like I'll join you. Like, let's talk about deep, meaningful things. Um, that is when the work is great. It's less good when sometimes your job as a couples therapist is to bear witness to incompatibility. And that piece feels awful um, because there's nothing that you can do. You have to let both partners see the authentic other and then make a decision about whether or not that is a tolerable partner for them. That is a very painful process because that is about acceptance of what you have. Woo! Child. I know that's right. When you're sitting with someone and you know that they're not compatible with you, what do you do with that? That's t- that's like very hard. Um, yeah. I'm looking at the comments right now. Kathy says, not just partners, but kids as well. That was very revealing who these kids are. We only saw them to lay down the rules and to um and to to, to give them money. And now all of a sudden we get to know them. Really, that's who you are. I bet that was like challenging and um Kurt Christian says definitely having goals beyond my own personal enjoyment has kept me relatively sane and having shared values deep in my relationship with my spouse kid and like-minded friends also in Kristen's case she said that um she actually realized that she was developing closer relationships because we do think the same and maybe she hadn't noticed those things before we do share these values so in some ways all relationships weren't breaking down but a lot of them were a lot of them were which is evidenced by the 400 more people going to counseling than were before the pandemic started yeah um and kelly says very true kathy i agree Kristen. i need to work on things bigger than myself oh my gosh that's a good point kelly you know um she brings up i think everybody has said that so far you know i said that you know me doing this um the news show um dana said that um helene said that everybody said by focusing on something that's bigger than ourselves it helped us to focus mentally feel good about ourselves and to push forward during these um tough times intellectually and emotionally yes um kristen says yes these are people in the comments kristen says yes here but i'm an introvert Ciao. <laughs> 
Let me tell you, you could be an introvert and still do something bigger than yourself. I am an extreme introvert, um, honestly, and I just do my show. So you you have to just figure out a way to do it. And um, just this is how I socialize. I don't do anything social outside of this. So um, this is me. <laughs> so you can figure it out. And if you need help, you know, message me. We'll come up with something together. We'll come up with something together. So thank you so much for um for sharing with us. Um, Dana, I appreciate you. you. I appreciate you. Uh, let me see if I can get you off of that. And then um, now we are coming up with Holly. Holly Wade. Uh, let's see. Holly, Holly, Holly. There you go. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the show. So Holly, tell us about your pandemic story. Where were you before it started and how did it impact your life? I had a complicated story as well. I think Dana and I had similar experiences, although luckily my children were adults and out of the house. Um, one of them is in Denver, in fact. But I had moved to Nashville in January of 2020. I had opened a private practice. I was filling up. I had just decorated my office. I was so excited to get, be going to work every day. And then March rolled around. And I had one particular client who was away ahead of the game she was watching and she was freaking out about this disease and she was watching it and she was supposed to be going to um, Austin for the uh, music thing that they have there, which I can't think of the name of it at the moment, but, um, and they shut it down. And I was like, okay, now I'm paying attention. I, there's something going on here. I need to like do. And I, on March 13th, I went straight to telehealth. I lost one client who told me he'd see me when it was over. <laughs> which was hilarious because I was like, it ain't going to be two weeks, dude. Like you might want to like continue with your therapy, but, um, he was probably not that into therapy anyway. So, um, everybody stayed. I saw way more people than I wanted to see, wow. um, on a weekly basis. I had a wait list that was out the door. I served as a preferred provider for a, a major university health center. So I had a lot of nurses and staff and people who were dealing with a lot of really tough stuff and making tough decisions about like, how do I do this and what's okay for me and what's not okay for me. And, um, you know, holding that boundary of what was not okay for me. Um, mm. I worked from my closet that whole time. Luckily, it was a very big closet, but it happened to have the best internet. And my clothes were behind me and I did not have the upgrade to have the filter. And I was just like, this is where I am. <laughs> like, this is, you know, the pandemic. And those are my clothes behind me. And every once in a while, I would forget to tell somebody and they would say, are you in your closet? And I'd be like, <laughs> oh, Yeah. Um, and then my, the tornado had hit right before. So we had gone in Nashville, we had a tornado, then that was in February. And then this, this, the, um, we just kind of gotten cleaned up, not even from that and the pandemic hit. And, and then I kind of made a list of all this stuff um, that happened. Um, let's see. Oh, then we moved again. Last year, my daughter moved to Denver in the middle of the pandemic. Both my adult children got new jobs and moved during the pandemic, which was good. It was all good. Um, and I was kind of like, okay, I don't have anything to complain about. It's all good. But I had this emotional anxiety right here. Like my business wasn't hurt. My children were fine. In fact, good things were happening to them. But I had this constant like physical anxiety that I had never had in my life before I went to the doctor for my heart I you know I was like I'm there's something wrong this is not it's anxiety no it's not no it's not I don't have anxiety mm. you know so that was you know we all got something maybe we hadn't had before um luckily though for me I was also um very much to what Dana said I had gotten divorced a few years earlier and I was living with my now husband and um he's so much better than my ex-husband <laughs> like so it was awesome because okay. we're compatible we shared values and we we did things together and we passed time doing stupid stuff we played words with friends out on our porch for forever like literally both on our phones but we were talking to each other we went for walks every day to try to get out of the house he he cooked for me to the point where if I came downstairs and there wasn't food I was like what's going on like, where's my food? Cause he was not working. His, his industry was shut down. Um, and so, uh, you know, it was real, like, 
I think it's a little bit of like what Dana was saying. It was good. Um, it was good for me, but I, but I was feeling the anxiety when I was little, my mom went back to work and we never had toilet paper. So the fact that I couldn't find toilet paper was like a major issue for me because I had childhood scars from like running out of toilet paper. Oh, so once man. I got toilet paper, some of that anxiety went away. My dad was doing some Trump shit that was driving me nuts. So my relationship with him, much to what Dana said was that was broken. Cause I couldn't talk to him. Like I, it was, he wouldn't validate like that. This was crazy. This is not okay. Um, and it, and it, it was really kind of crazy. Um, but we got through it. Um, and I guess, I mean, I finally realized that I could not bear the burden for everyone else. And I took a vacation in July. Mm. I took a, like, I am shut down. Do not talk to me. And I went and sat by the river at my family's house up in the smoky mountains, which I'm very lucky to have. It was a, it was one again. So gratitude is part of my truth for how I got through the pandemic for sure. Um, and now, and then we had to move to Memphis. Both our mothers live here and they were getting that, that I will say one of the things that one of the things that I would say is very true. The elderly people in the 70 and up, maybe 65 and up, they really took the brunt of this as far as probably kids are hurt, but kids are resilient. Kids are going to catch up. They have many years to catch up. My mom lost years off of her life. So I do think that, you know, we made the decision to come and be closer to our mothers as they are, you know, getting more needy. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm really glad I, I moved to Memphis two weeks later, my mother fell and broke her knee. So this has been wonderful. And once again, I was like, all right, I'm not taking new clients. I continued with my telehealth people, much like Dana, I'd already had some telehealth experience, which was very advantageous to me um, because I just went right into it seamlessly. But when I moved here, I kept my Nashville people and I just only saw like 15 people a week instead of 30 while I was taking care of my mom. And, and I set my limit. I was like, this is, this is what I can do. This is what I can't do. And now I've finally got a new office. I'm excited to be there and start seeing people in person again. My mom is back home. She still makes me come help her take a shower. It's all so special, <laughs> but, um, but it is also, I'm very happy to be able to do it. So. This is amazing to me. I, I'm just, I, this is something I wasn't expecting, you know, to hear the stories of our frontline workers, the people who are caring for everyone mentally and hearing what it's like. I, I'm, I have goosebumps right now. I, I didn't expect this, you know, it's just, it's amazing that you guys were still working, still going, still striving and still managing to maintain your own sanity while every, the whole world was going crazy. So thank you so much for that. But um, before, before I let you go, you wanted to talk about isolation during the pandemic. And um, there are so many people out there, including myself, who are still isolated and sometimes it's self-imposed, mm -hmm. but that can still cause some kind of mental stress. How can we deal with that effectively to try to create peace of mind? Do you have any advice for us? Yeah, I think the first thing to know is that people, humans need connection. We are built for connection. There's, that is not negotiable. Even introverts. The difference between an introvert and an extrovert is an introvert gets their energy from kind of being alone. And an extrovert gets their energy from being around people. It's not that one or the other likes people more or the other. It's that that's where their energy comes from. So, it, so introverts might have done a little better in isolation than extroverts. Um, in fact, I had a lot of extroverts that I worked with um, who, who were just freaking out because they didn't have it. They were really depressed. They could not get energy. So for the extroverts, they might break isolation a little earlier. They might do more, connect with people meaningfully, as Dana mentioned, in make an effort, more Zoom calls, more phone calls. Um, getting, getting around, being around people in a way that feels safe for them as much as possible. Um, but you know, they're probably not going to go back to happy hour. Although in Nashville, people are back at happy hour. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, I think that for, as far as isolation, where we are today, because I know we have a limited time is that we're coming out of isolation. And I kind of, you asked me to do three truths around that. The one is my way is not the only way. 
So what's okay for me might be not okay for someone else. So no judgment. I'm like, I'm going to do what I'm going to do for me. Mm -hmm. If you don't join me, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to be mad at you. I'm going to go ahead and do what I want to do, but I will understand if because of whatever reason you are not comfortable with going to the circus or the football game or whatever. And I'm also going to be okay with you going and me not going if I don't want to go. The next one I had was re-emerging is hard work. I had a client just this week say, we went out to eat for the first time and it was really weird. Like this being around people thing was weird. And I, and I had noticed the same. I've been out a little more. I've had all my vaccines and boosters and I've just felt comfortable being out. And that's my, my personal choice. I don't have any autoimmune disease. I don't live with little kids or, or anything, but, um, but I remember when I first started going out, I was like, Ooh, why are you so close to me? People like back off. And, and, and I quit during when Delta surged, I had just started going to the gym again. Nope. I, I pulled back and stopped going to the gym again. And I have just started going again now to public yoga classes, like post Omicron. So it's going to ebb and flow. We're not going to do the same thing. I think that's important and that it's okay. Like it, it's okay to feel nervous. Like I don't know if y'all have noticed, but I've noticed like when I, I will wait instead of reaching across someone in the grocery store for some eggs or something, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get in someone's space the way I would have before. And I think many of us, if we ever traveled like the subway in New York or in Asia in particular, people are closer together in those environments as Americans, we're not used to, used to that as much. Mm -hmm. um, and then my last one is I have permission to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I have permission to take that vacation you know, that I need to take, I'm going on vacation next week. I think, no, in two weeks, I'm going on vacation. And, um, and I'm just telling my clients, no, no telehealth, I'm on vacation. And, and, um, and I had to learn that the hard way. I took a couple of vacations where I was like, oh, I can do my telehealth from Mexico. Mm -hmm. You know what? No, I'm in Mexico being in Mexico. That's what I need for my self-care. And, um, I don't want to be pulled in my enjoyment and then my, and then feel like I did a crappy job because I really wanted to be at the beach. So, um, we have to give permission to ourselves to, to just say, this is hard. I need a bubble bath or this is hard. I need to like not do my kids homework with them. I've, I've been known even before pandemic to send a note to my kid's teacher. We can get this done. Our family was doing something else. Um, and to let our kids not get straight A's, like stuff like that. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. So. I love, I love that. I love that. The acceptance of imperfection sincerely, and even with your children, I had never heard that concept even introduced before because we want our kids to be amazing strivers and diligent. And I can't imagine being like, Chad, please tell them we was busy. We was, we was bowling. We couldn't do it. I'm so glad you said that. That's an awesome self-care share for everyone, especially coming out of isolation during the pandemic. Thank you so much, Holly, for your time and for sharing your story. Thank you. All right. So let's see. Right now, we're going to talk to Dr. Jacqueline Darby. Um, Dr. Jackie, um, tell us about your pandemic story. Where were you when it began? How did it impact your life and your career? So I work at a university, and uh, so I was at a, on campus when we were, when this all happened. So we were, you know how students are like, okay, we're going to go on spring break, we're going to come back. We're like, okay, students are going to go on spring break, we'll still be at work. And then within 48 hours, like, nope, pack everything up, we're going home. And so literally having to take an on-campus center and make it 100% virtual in probably less than 48 hours. Um, thinking we're going to be gone for six weeks. And it turns out we were gone for two years. Ooh. And so, yeah, so my plants are dead, are dead, completely dead. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't, they did not survive. They were second. Like, um, but it, it was a whole adjustment. And so it went from, I go to an office, I commute, I have my schedule, I know what I'm going to do, to, okay, I have to decorate my home office, didn't play on it. I need to figure out what the whole telehealth thing. I've, I had some experience with it, but like, what does it look like on a college campus? What does that look like when I'm only licensed in one area and my student is in California? Or it, so how does all navigate, trying to get out of the laws, like looking like, okay, when are we coming back? And then once we have a plan, all of a sudden it's like, nope, we gotta revamp it. We have a plan, no, we gotta revamp it. And so it was a constant changing 
that I felt during the pandemic. I had to get used to like, hey, these plans, they're nice, but they're just suggestions, like speed bumps, mm-hmm. just suggestions. And so, cause everything was changing so fast and um, things that I used to do in order for my, cause my belief is I have to be centered cause clients are gonna do what clients are gonna do, but I have to be centered in order for me to do my best work. And so with the pandemic, it, I was off kilter. I was like, I have a flow, I have a set schedule. I have a self care plan. I can't go to the gym. I can't do this. I can't go hang with my friends. Like we're all in this house. I got to find toilet paper. I thought I was cool. Apparently not. My toilet paper buying schedule was off. So I had to do all these things that I didn't plan on doing, but I had to readjust. And so on top of all that, I'm in DC. So the social political climate, yeah, we were seeing that. So we were on the, you know, protests are happening. How how are we going? What's the traffic looking like? Is there is there shopping traffic on this one? Okay, don't go that route. So kind of on guard. So not only am I helping my clients through it, I'm also going through it. So it was that living through uh, traumas while going through helping people through traumas while always knowing like, okay, this is going to change. So that was my pandemic. <laughs> so, oh, so, wow. Um, yeah, that's, that's how I <laughs> survived. And even now, even though we're sort of out of it, um, we're kind of pre-post, I, we're still changing because things variants happen, policies change, and I still have to be like, okay, well, what are we doing this month? Because it's not gonna be like it was last month. Um, so that's where I was. So I, I thought it was very interesting that you said it was very poignant and impactful to me when you mentioned that the plans that you make, you know, the very best laid plans are just suggestions. Is that something that you would offer to to clients and people who are watching who are trying to figure out? How do I navigate this whole thing? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I always tell people, don't be afraid to ask questions. Que- you know, question everything. If you don't know something, find out. Get the truth that you know. And also remember that your best your best laid plans are just suggestions. It's not set in stone. It doesn't have to be set in stone. Because as human beings, we are meant to survive and thrive. We will adjust. That's in our, as encoded in our DNA. So even if you think, oh, I can't make it, I have to struggle with everything out, DNA wise, you're going to figure it out because you're, we're meant to survive. And so Damn. remembering that, yeah, right, <laughs> right. Okay. That's, yeah, like sit with that. Let, let it marinate, right? But people forget how resilient we are as human beings, and this has shown us how resilient we really are. Because anxiety tells us all the time, like you can't do. You got to plan for this. You got to plan for that. Don't forget about this. Uh. Uh-uh. Not today. No, no, no. Just drink your water and mind your business because you're going to make it. It's going to be okay. Well, <laughs> damn, that is awesome. Oh my gosh. Straight from the source, straight from the provider. I love it, Dr. Jacqueline. Um, you wanted to talk about, oh, your topic was engagement and mental well being. Like, you were <laughs> like, look, I had to figure out how to dig into this. Can you share some of those insights with us? Absolutely. Um, I already talked about one about, you know, your plans are, are changeable. So having to know that, okay, I might have this one system I do for self-care, but make sure you have other things as well. You kind of have to pick and choose a little bit. Maybe I can't go to the gym. Okay, but what can I do? I can go on YouTube. I can, I can take a walk around my block. I can maybe do some jumping jacks or maybe I just sit down and just veg out for a day, do a little meditation. That's totally fine. But you want to have different options so you can pick and choose. Um, and also you want to make sure I tell people self-care is the best care. You need to plan your self-care like you would plan any appointment. You go to the doctor's office, you go to get your food, you go get your hair done, you better make sure your self-care is in there. And self-care could be so many different things. It could be talking to your therapist. It could be doing face masks and spa days, but it also could be taking a lunch break and not working. That's self-care. It could be making sure you have three meals and a snack. Self-care, taking a 20-minute nap. Self-care. Um, so any of those things, and like, that's how you do it. You have to be inactive. You have to say, today I choose me. And because I choose me, I'm able to pour into other people that I want to do. Oh my gosh, y'all are blowing my mind. Every last <laughs> one of you guys gave me something that I just can't even, like you just say a plan your self-care, like you would plan your meals, plan your time at the gym. Like, you know, definitely just imagine this is my self-care time. And I've, I've never, self-care to me was a reaction to being overstressed, overburdened and out of my mind mentally. 
but you're saying it needs to be a regular activity? And it, yeah, because yes. So self-care can be something reactive, right? I'm overwhelmed. I need to take a break. That's totally fine. But what if we, I believe in pre- preventive care. What if we do self-care first so that I don't get overwhelmed and burdened and burnt out? Y'all listening to this in the <laughs> audience? What are y'all, are y'all hearing this? Are y- okay. Okay. Wow. So yeah. So again, so you, if you plan it, if you put it in your schedule and you treat it with importance rather than treating it as an afterthought, then you'll actually do it, right? If it's not scheduled, it, if I have a calendar. If it's not on the calendar, it don't get done. Everything's on my calendar. If it's not there, I'll forget. But if I so if that's why if I do myself care, like oh I'll do it later, and it's not on a calendar, I don't schedule it, I won't do it, and then I get burnt out. So put it put it first. And then watch, and then you shape everything around it. Then watch what happens. Okay, I'll watch what happens. I'll make an experiment (laughs) and let y'all know. Okay, I love it. Wow, oh my gosh, guys. This was amazing, straight from the source, straight from the people who are imparting wisdom and standing in the gap for us and sitting there and listening to us when we need it. These are the people that care about us and show that they care by showing up every single time. Like, I really appreciate everyone for coming today and especially the people who are in the audience who are watching. Kelly is over there saying, yes, right, self-care is important. They're rooting. I want to thank Dana's friends. Shout out to Dana's friends for coming and making this um event live because you surely did in the comments you're welcome to come every single time i want you here i want you back dana you got to bring your friends back but is there anyone who has any questions for our panelists you know before we let them go they've all shared such amazing insights with us i don't even i just want to keep them on here and ask them all of life's questions does anyone have like a big life question that you want to ask and get their insight on um, Holly said, this is self-care for me, taking time to talk to other women who care. Oh, Holly. Oh, I know that's right. Kelly says, I so agree, Holly Way. Yes, it is. It is self-care, connecting with other professionals who are who care and knowing that everybody in this battle. And the great thing about today was that everybody on the panel is doing okay. And everybody was willing to share how they managed to get to that okay point because all of us weren't okay at some point during this pandemic but we worked for it and we wanted it and we did it we did the radical thing christian says we subscribed (laughs) this was awesome um big life questions how do we move forward from here we are tired oh my goodness does anyone want to um tackle that how do we move forward from here and we're exhausted um what about you, Dana, since you, since you have the, um, the crowd with you, you want to answer that? <laughs> they all know what I say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they have to hear me all the time. We have a group thread that, that keeps us going. Okay. Um, I think, so it's interesting. I've actually struggled with this exact issue over the last two years. I, like I said, I was the chair of a political party and I have felt more and more just this year, like, although I will still be very politically involved, that may not be how I best get my message out. And so I am changing my goal of trying to talk about things from like the Dr. Dana perspective, like let me spread my societal commentary in a different way rather than focusing on policy change. The theme of what I'm getting at is it's okay to change what we are working toward so that it's something that feels like we can be more effective. I would also like to say that I decided to do that because of a conversation I had with Kristen who just asked. So she is the one that got me to that place. (laughs) Um, But that's, I mean, it's really about knowing what your values are, knowing who you are and figuring out, there are many, many different doors that you can go through to be consistent with your values. Choose one that feels like it's going to be a little bit rewarding right now so that you are consistent with who you want to be, but you're not doing the things that feel like beating your head against the wall. So and the remedy for, for our tiredness and moving forward is to choose things that are consistent with who we want to be. Get it. We got who it. We, who we are. Who we are. Who we like, are. Be your authentic self unapologetically all the time because... Oh, okay. Can I just say this? Um, Sorry. Kristen would like to also hear from everyone else. Sorry. One more thing. Um, She knows what I'm going to say. 
Um, it is very, very important. Women are socialized to contort themselves to fit. Oh, Dr. Darby is, is yes. Okay. <laughs> um, we're, we're socialized to contort ourselves to please other people that comes at the expense of our authenticity. Not everyone is going to like you when you're your authentic self. Who cares? That's why you get like some badass friends who are like, like I always say I'm an acquired taste and I'm like, you yes. don't have to like me. That's cool. Like I have friends. It's fine. Go ahead, Holly. Yeah. She, I mean, I'm, I'm, I did specialize or trained with Brene Brown and her work. And it's, it's, we wear ourselves out being what, what we think other people want us to be. When I work with people who are on dating apps and stuff like that, I'm like, put out there who you are. My dating app, when I, I lasted a week, I will have to say, cause it felt very unsafe I don't know I just felt very exposed on a dating app mm. but I did meet my husband there I will I will oh. cop to, I will cop to that but um but my last line was if you don't think Trump is crazy don't bother and <laughs> it was it was because I, I had no interest in meeting anyone who didn't at least see that he was crazy I mean you could have still voted for him and this was 2016 you could have still voted for him but as long as you knew he was crazy like that was okay with me we could talk about it but if you thought he was normal and he was you know not an insane person then I don't want anything to do with you and because it was a waste of my time you know I was weeding people out but but my clients they put out there what they think people want and I'm like well then you're just drawing people to you who who then you have to hold that up and if that's not who you are that's not who you are you know that's and that's exhausting but I will add what to do when you're exhausted it's a one word answer rest we get we get to rest you not not go to sleep, not be lazy, just rest, intentional rest and recover. So then you can go up back out there and do it again. Helene, do you have some thoughts, Dr. Darby? I, I'm, I don't know where to go. I'm excited. Um, okay. Authentic peace. I always tell people, don't make yourself uncomfortable to make other people comfortable. Not in 2022. We're not doing that. But yeah. also the rest part is let go of what normal is because we are now in a whole new new normal. We will never go back to pre-2020. That's not happening. Let's let that go. And we now can shape what we want our new normal to be. And that takes time and that's okay. Um, and give yourself time to recover because we've been through a lot. I always, when I do presentation, I say 2020 was a lot and 2021 is still a hot mess. Like it's, it's okay. <laughs> It's totally fine. Give ourselves time to get to where we need to be. Helene, do you have any advice for people who are tired and they want to know where can they go from here? I, I just have to comment on these women that I'm with here today. You guys are amazing. I'm, I'm a teacher by heart. I'm taking notes. I'm like thinking, I, I, I want all of you everybody here to come back and visit with me again um, on a webinar or something that I'm going to put out there for coming from the heart because I feel like my community would just be enamored by all of your advice. I think that everyone brings this incredible dimension of their platform of who they are and I just I'm honored to just be part of this so thank you guys. Um, but what I want to say is that I love the fact that you um, uh, I think Holly was mentioning something about the dating apps and trying to be something that you're not and my daughter's a Gen Zer and you know out there and swipe left and swipe right and I just say to her look everyone has different frequencies right when you meet someone you know you like them or you know you don't like them it's like an animal a dog a dog will gravitate to a dog that they like it's an animal instinct so either you connect or you don't connect and I think that really authenticity is something that comes from the core of who you are. So really just be, I, you know, we talk about this a lot on the podcast and Instagram lives and different stuff is that just, just own it, be you, because you know what? You want to be with someone who appreciates who you are. Why bring, why, why falsify that and, and, and be something that you're not. So I think my advice would just to, you know, to say is own it, be authentic, enjoy enjoy yourself i think that what i've learned in doing the podcast in the last two years is i've really grown to to like me and know me because before i really had the podcast i was this lunatic driving down the new jersey turnpike 
four hours a day, two hours back and forth commuting. I love my community that I was working with at the university, but I don't even know who the hell I was. I had really, I was balancing my, my kids, my daughter's 24 now, my son is now 19. I was about, I was the mom, I, I, I was here, there, and I was everywhere, but I was nowhere, really. And then, unfortunately, I had to go through vertigo to really land me to where I really should be in my life. And now, I'll take my mom's advice, and I just have mindfulness. I stay still, because I was always moving, and I just, I rest. It's okay to rest. It's okay to be chilling, and it's okay to really love yourself. That's cool. And I think that I, what I've learned in the last two years of the pandemic is self-care doesn't have to be going to a spa. Self-care can just be being with yourself or enjoying the people around you and creating a community. So you guys rock. Thank you so much. And yeah, it's, this has been amazing. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Yes, this is. I, I really appreciate everyone who participated. It was like a, a wild grab last minute, but look what it brought to us. Like such a blessing. I learned so much from all of you. Um, does anybody want to shout out their um, social media or anything? How can we find you? We can go one by one so that we can connect with you guys. And as always, you can always reach out to me if you want to reconnect with any of these ladies. I have their information. Um, Dana, where are you on social media? Uh, not in that many places because my practice is very full and I'm, I'm very tired. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm on Facebook, but like Dana Torpy Newman. Um, I also am, I, I restarted my Twitter, which I think is like at Dana Torpy. Um, I never tweet because I don't fully understand how to do it. Um, I don't think that there's that. Oh, and you can email me. I can put my email in the, in the chat. Um, okay. <laughs> yes. I, and I answer my phone what, sometimes when I'm not in session. <laughs> Helene, um, where can we find you? Sure. Um, I can be found on Apple Podcasts, of course, and Spotify at Coming From The Heart Podcast. I can also be found at, I'm on Instagram all the time. I don't really use Facebook very much as a platform at Coming Underscore From The Heart Podcast. You can DM me. You can also email me at Coming From The Heart Podcast at gmail.com. But really the best way to get me is on Instagram. I'm always I'm always on Instagram, lots of stories. So thank you guys. Awesome. I'll put my information in the chat too, yeah. Okay, Holly, where are you on social media? I I have a blog where I've written like I mean, one of my one of my blogs is like from the pandemic and it's it's like uh, I can't remember exactly what I titled it, but it's something like what I've learned from coming in from going into the closet. And another one is like anxiety. You're here. I was wondering when you were going to show up. And it's not, I mean, it's my, um, it's just my name, Holly Wade LCSW. If you Google that, my website comes up and then the thoughts is where my blog is. Um, and I am on Instagram and I kind of, I, I, I'm full too usually. So I don't have a lot of social media. I don't have a lot of need to market other than my desire to share with other people things that um, that I think may, will make their life better. Um, and that are, that I spent a lot of years like struggling. And when I've discovered this stuff, I, I've kind of been like, Oh, I want everybody else to know it too. Like if anybody, yeah, anybody right. does the Enneagram, I'm an, I'm a seven, which I'm an enthusiast, which used to come across as really like obnoxious. Cause I interrupt people all the time, but but it's because I want them to know this wonderful stuff. So that's what I put on my stuff. It's not to sell anything or anything. So, okay. <laughs> Dr. Jacqueline. Um, so you can follow me on IG at the unconscious shift. That's my business IG where we do um, mental health awareness tips, tricks of how to manage to take care of your mental health. Um, you can also go on my website, drjdarby.com. Um, I do a blog post as well. I'm trying to get better at posting, but you can saw any, and in my old podcast, any features I've been a part of, it's all right there. And I'll definitely post it in the chat. I know I talk fast. All right. Once again, thank you ladies so much for joining us and everybody who's watching today. I hope you'll come back next month when, um, the first Saturday in, um, in April, we're going to be talking about radical, radical, um, forms of self-care. What have you done that has changed your life 
that you felt you had to do this. I have to do this right now because I can't stay live like this anymore. And we're going to have women on the show who are demonstrating their stories and, and sharing about those radical things that they had to do. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I am T. Erica with the Feisty News. Of course, you can follow me at the Feisty News on all platforms and subscribe to the feistynews.com to be updated about every episode and all of our support programs for women. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty news for women. <laughs>